Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a system of equations and it's going to be a cubic system. So let's get started. Okay, here's the plan. Uh, we do have three variables and three equations, so this should be solvable. We're looking for real solutions. And what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate these equations in different ways. And you're going to be faced with a surprise at the end, so make sure you stay tuned. All right. Let's get started. So we have three equations and kind of notice the uh, similarities between the equations. I do have x cube, y cube, z cube, x, y, z in them, and also a constant. So here's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to add these equations. And there's a good reason for that. When I do add these equations, x cube is going to cancel out, y cube is going to cancel out, and z cube is going to cancel out. So I'm going to be ending up with x cube plus y cube plus z cubed and then minus 3xyz, and then 11 minus 24 is going to be negative 13. So what I'd like to do here is I'd like to isolate x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed, and that is going to look like 3xyz plus 13. Awesome. So this is kind of like my main positive equation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take each one of these equations now and work with this one. But I want to get rid of more stuff. So what I, what I like to do is take the first equation, for example, and I'd like to multiply that by negative 1, okay? And put here. So that's going to look like negative x cubed, negative y cubed, plus z cubed. And then if you think about it uh, this way, so this expression Suppose it was written like this, okay, and I negate both sides, and it's going to look like negative x, y, z plus 11 now, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing this for every equation. Let's see where that goes. So first of all, let's do this one. x cubed, y cubed cancels out. We end up with 2z cubed equals 2xyz plus 24. And that should give me z cubed equals x, y, z plus 12. Awesome. This is going to be one of my resulting equations. Now let's go ahead and use this expression, the blue one, right? The blue one. Again, but this time with another equation. So what I'd like to do is isolate it like this. And then now this time, I'll take the second one, right? Okay, I, I want to take this equation. And I'd like to manipulate this one. So let's go ahead and write it first. x cubed minus y cubed plus z cubed can be written as x, y, z plus 21. And then I'll be negating it. So that's going to look like what? Negative x cubed, right? Let me write it here. Negative x cubed plus y cubed minus z cubed. And I'm multiplying both sides by negative 1 here. And the right-hand side is going to be negative x, y, z minus 21. When you add these two equations, good things are going to happen. x cubed, z cubed is going to cancel out. You're going to end up with 2y cubed is equal to 2x, y, z minus 8. If you divide both sides by 2, you get y cubed is equal to x, y, z minus 4. This is another good equation that I'd like to keep. And then finally... We're going to be using this blue thing again, right? Which is x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed is equal to 3xyz. I think I forgot to write the z here. Plus 13. And then what I'd like to do now is use the third equation, but I want to negate it. So I'd like to write it as x cubed minus y cubed minus z cubed x cubed minus y cubed minus z cubed. And then on the right-hand side, in the third equation, which is this one, I'll have x, y, z plus 3, but I have to negate it, so it's going to be negative x, y, z minus 3, right? As always. And then we'll add these two equations, and what's going to happen? y cubed, z cubed cancels out, and I end up with 2x cubed is equal to 2x, y, z plus 10, and then let's go ahead and simplify this. x cubed is equal to x, y, z plus 5. Awesome. 
Now, I got three equations, right? So what I'd like to do is take those equations, put them together, and then go from there. But when you put, put those three equations uh, together, you're going to be uh, dealing with something real nice. I'll show you in a little bit. Let me go ahead and pick a different color here. I don't know, maybe this one. Okay, so what do we have? We have that x cubed is equal to x, y, z plus 5. We have y cubed is equal to x, y, z minus 4. And we have z cubed is equal to x, y, z plus 12. So we do have a system, and which is kind of different from our original one, but that's where it comes from. What's really nice about the system is that, and this is the surprise part, we have like four different expressions here, x cube, y cube, z cube, but also something like x, y, z. So one method could be we could isolate x, y, z and set them equal to each other. Uh, maybe it'll give us something, but we'll do it differently. Okay. Let's see how this goes. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to take these two, uh, three equations and s multiply them all. So I'll multiply all the equations and you'll see in a little bit why I'm doing that. Okay. This is going to be an interesting result. So I'm multiplying everything. Okay. Now, the reason why I do this is going to be obvious when I write this x, y, z, hopefully, as this. And then, I hope you see what I see. We're going to be using a very powerful method, which I emphasize all the time in the videos. What is that called? It's called substitution. Awesome. So, I'm going to call this u. x, y, z is going to be called u, and we're going to be getting something nice. But... We're not done yet, and it's going to get nicer in a little bit. Okay, so this is going to be u plus 5, u minus 4, and u plus 12. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and distribute this. I'll keep the u plus 5 and distribute these two first. That should give me u squared plus 8, u minus 48. And if I go ahead and distribute this one, I should be getting u cubed plus 8u squared minus 48u plus 5u squared plus 40 u minus 240. Now, what is really nice about this equation is that u cubed cancels out. Beautiful. We don't even have a cubic. We have a quadratic and we can solve it. Let's go ahead and solve it. Now, what does that look like? 13 u squared here and here. If you add these and these, you get negative 8 u. And then finally, minus 240 is equal to zero. Now, can this equation be solved? Well, let's give it a try. Well, we know that they're real solutions. Let's use the quadratic formula. You could also use factoring here, but, you know, it's going to take probably longer. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. But notice that c is negative, so it's going to turn into a plus sign. 4 times 13 times 240. Don't let these large numbers scare you because we're going to handle that nicely. And the bottom is 2 times a, which is 26, right? Okay, great. Now, what am I going to do next? I'll simplify this. But notice that I do have a 4 here. And 64 is 4 times 16. Can I get a 16 out of this? Yes, because 240 is 16 times 15. Therefore, we can simplify this. Beautiful. I love it. So, I can write this as 4 times 13 times 16 times 15, beautiful, divide by 26. Now, 4 times 16 is uh, 64, so I can take out a 64 here. 8 plus minus 64 plus 64 times 13 times 15 is 195. And don't worry, it's going to simplify again, divide by 26. Now, what do we have? Well, we do have... Uh, 64 times 1 plus 195, which is equal to 196. And guess what? That is 14 squared. Beautiful. So I can take out the 64 as 8. And inside, I'm going to have the square root of 196, which is equal to 14. Beautiful. This couldn't get any better, right? Okay. Now I can go ahead and simplify this. I mean, I can divide everything by 2, right? 4 plus minus 4 times 14 is 56. And the bottom number is going to be 13. 
Beautiful. Let's go ahead and split it up now. From here, u is going to equal either 60 over 13 or 4 minus 56 is negative 52 divided by 13 is negative 4. Awesome. We're getting an integer. Beautiful. Now, what is u? u is x, y, z. Remember that? Okay. So now I have x, y, z. But what is so good about getting x, y, z? Well, if you know x, y, z, we can find x, y, and z. Why? Because we know that x cubed is equal to x, y, z plus 5. So from here, x cubed is either 60 over 13 plus 5, which is 125 over 13, right? And this means what? If x cubed is 125 over 13, then x is going to equal, you know what? I just want to write it this way because I want to leave some room so I can write both solutions here. I think it's going to look better. Okay, cool. So x cubed is equal to one more time, x, y, z plus 5. And if I use the first value of x, y, z, it's going to be this one. And 5 times 13 is 65. This is going to give me 125 over 13. Now, from here, x is going to equal the cube root of this. But notice that the cube root of 125 is 5. So you're going to be getting something like this. 5 uh, divided by the cube root of 13. I don't worry about rationalizing the denominator, no big deal, but we got our first x value. To find the second x value, I'm going to be using a negative 4. So x cubed is going to be x, y, z plus 5 again, but that's equal to negative 4 plus 5, which is 1. Awesome. And the second x value, so you can call this x1 and the, this one x2, is going to be 1. Awesome. So I got the x values. Next, we're going to find the y values. Let's go ahead and do that y cubed is going to equal, what is y cubed equal to? x, y, z minus 4. If you use 60 over 13 minus 4, that's going to give me 8 over 13. And from here, if I cube root both sides, y1 is going to equal 2 over cube root of 13. That's my first y value. And if I use, if I use the other one, which is uh, the negative 4, I'll be getting negative 8, and from here, y2 is going to be, y2 is going to be negative 2. Beautiful. I got the y values as well. Let's go ahead and find the z values. As you know, z cubed is equal to x, y, z plus 12. When I solve the system, this is what I got. x, y, z, if I use 60 over 13 plus 12, okay, let's take a look at this. 60 over 13, okay, 13 times 12 is 156. Plus 60 is 216. Cube root of 216 is 6. Therefore, z can be written as 6 over cube root of 13. That's going to be z1. That's our first z value. And the second z value is going to come from the negative 4 because you know that the other value for x, y, z is negative 4. So it's going to be 8. And z2 is going to be 2 from here. Okay? So these are all my x, y, z values. As you can see, let me uh, zoom out a little bit so you can see better. Okay. These are my x, y, z values. And we are done solving the system. Okay. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment and like. And if you haven't done so, hit the subscribe button and hit the notifications button. I'll see you tomorrow with another exciting video, which is going to be a geometry puzzle. Take care. Bye-bye.